name is Erica. I am a STEM tutor. And today I'm going to be taking a look at this classic binding energy problem. So we're told that we have an atom that has a mass of 112.923650 AMU. And we want to calculate the binding energy in MeV per nucleon. And we're given in this problem, the we're told to use the masses of the mass of a hydrogen one atom. And they give that mass here and the mass of the neutron they provide. And we're also provided with this really handy conversion of um, one atomic mass unit to 931.5 MeV. That will become very handy when we use our binding energy equation. So a couple of things we'll want to remember when we're approaching this problem is first Einstein's famous E equals MC squared equation. And also I boxed here the, uh, our conversion of one AMU to MeV. This is, uh, will become very important. Before I explain these equations down here, I first want to jump over to board two and just give a brief explanation of the concept of binding energy. So here I have this simple sketch of this beryllium eight nucleus. And I have some of the notation here that we'll need for our binding energy equation. Uh, X, our isotope chemical symbol, A, our mass number, and Z, our atomic number. So in the case of beryllium eight, we have BE, that's for X, Eight is our mass number, or our total number of nucleons, the sum of the protons and neutrons. And for the atomic number that we grab off the periodic table for beryllium is four. And the mass of the neutrons here, our um, binding energy equation will denote as mn. And the mass of the protons, the binding energy equation uses as the mass of hydrogen one. And the reason we use mass of hydrogen one is since hydrogen one is just one proton and one electron, and the electron mass is negligible, we can use the mass of hydrogen one in place for the mass of the proton. It's actually quicker to use that in the equation than trying to get the actual mass of the proton individually. So in this beryllium eight atom, we have four neutrons and four protons. And a very interesting thing happens in the world of nuclear chemistry. When you find the total sum of all these individual nucleons, so in this case here in this equation, uh, four times the mass of the neutrons for four neutrons and then four times mass of hydrogen for four protons, you'll find that this mass is actually greater than the mass of the nucleus, which is given off the periodic table. And the reason for this is because of the phenomenon of binding energy. So it actually, you, binding energy is the energy you need to separate an atom into its individual nucleons. This extra mass that we see that we don't measure when we measure the mass of the nucleus itself is called the mass defect. And you can find the binding energy by converting the mass defect into it, you can use the energy conversion to convert the mass defect into binding energy. This energy is what is required to split this nucleus into its individual constituents. And because it requires energy to split this nucleus apart into its individual components. We, we can see that the individual components by themselves actually have more energy than when they are combined in this nucleus. And so that is why we measure, we can see with Einstein's equation, when you increase energy, you increase mass also. And so that is why the mass of these individual constituents is actually greater than the mass of the nucleus itself. So that is the concept of binding energy. So we have our equations here now for that we're gonna use to calculate binding energy. First is this concept of mass defect, delta M. Delta M can be seen here in Einstein's equation as well. That is what we're going to use for delta M is this mass defect. And to find the mass defect, you want to find the sum of all the individual nucleon masses. And from that sum, you're going to subtract the mass of the nucleus. Or in equation form, we have our binding energy equation for the total binding energy is this term here, which is the full term for finding the mass defect times C squared. This is the bi traditional binding energy equation. And this is exactly modeled off of Einstein's equation, delta E equals delta MC squared, where delta E is our binding energy, delta M is our mass defect here. Oh, this whole term in bracket is our delta M term, and then C squared. Or alternatively, this equation will give you the binding energy, but we are told here our handy uh, AMU to MEV calculation. You can bypass this equation entirely by using that, that conversion factor. So alternatively, it is much easier, especially in this kind of problem, to use this equation for binding energy, that the binding energy of your, your uh, nucleus 
is equal to your mass defect times that conversion of 931.5 MeV per M AMU. Because your mass defect will be in units of AMU, and you can convert directly into energy, just like Einstein's equation is doing. Converting mass to energy, you can do it here with your mass to energy unit conversion. It is much easier than using this lengthier equation here with the speed of light term. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and go forward with solving this problem here. So we're going to write out everything that we're told in the original problem. And the original problem did say I-113, I believe they meant indium-113, uh, because there's actually no um, iodine-113 in nature, but there is surely an indium-113 in nature that has this exact atomic mass. So I believe they meant indium-113. If they did not mean indium-113 and they meant iodine, you can still apply this exact same strategy that I'll show here to solve the problem. So for now, we'll use indium. Uh, so first, we're going to get all of our notation written out. We're going to get this term here, this um, term we'll use for our equation, the x, a, and z we want to find for indium-113. So we know x, uh, our chemical symbol, in. Our mass number we're given as 113, that's the total number of nucleons, protons and neutrons combined. And our atomic number we were going to grab from the periodic table is the atomic number of indium is 49. So that's our Z value. So now we have A, Z, and we also want this M term. This M uh, is the mass of indium 113, which we're given in the problem as 112.923650 AMU. So now with all these things defined, we can go ahead and go forward with solving for our binding energy. So we're going to apply our mass defect equation. We want to find the mass defect. And just like as shown on board one, this bracket term is what we're going to use to find our mass defect. So what this represents is Z times mass of hydrogen, which is the mass of our protons in our nucleus, added to A minus Z times the mass of a neutron. What this term is finding is the mass of all our individual neutrons in our nucleus. So this term, the, the ZMH plus the A minus C times MN is the mass of the all the individual nucleons combined. And we'll subtract from that the mass of the nucleus itself. That will give us the mass defect we're looking for. So all we have to do is just plug in all these terms we found into our mass defect equation. We have 49 for Z. 113 for A, 49 for Z again here that we substitute, and this mass term of 112.923650 AMU. So now all we have to do, I have written out here what we were given in the problem, our mass of the hydrogen and the mass of the neutron. We'll just substitute those in here, and we'll have 49 times the mass of hydrogen plus 64 times the mass of a neutron minus our total atomic mass that we were given. And so if you continue to just multiply all these terms out, and you notice that these are all in units of AMU, so I'll have our mass defect as 1.014335 AMU. So that is our mass defect. And we're going to go ahead and go over to board four, because we need now, now that we have our mass defect, we want to find our binding energy. So we are going to apply our equation from board one, of uh, binding energy because we have this conversion factor. We're going to use binding energy is equal to our mass defect times our conversion factor. And so here's our conversion factor here. We have our binding energy as 1.014335 AMU. We're just going to substitute that in here for delta M. And we're left with this term, this equation here. Um, and when we multiply this all out, we will find that our binding energy of indium-113 is 944.8531 MeV. Now, this is our total binding energy, and the problem did not want total binding energy. It wanted the binding energy per nucleon. So we're going to go ahead and go forward and do that. To find the binding energy per nucleon, all you have to do is take your total binding energy and divide it by the number of nucleons. So we have 113 nucleons in indium-113. That's the total number of nucleons, uh, the sum of the amount of protons and neutrons. So we're just going to take our binding energy that we found and divide it by the number of nucleons, which was 113 nucleons. And we'll find that our binding energy per nucleon is 8.361531 MeV. 
that is our final answer. And I'm going to go over just for a last note over to board six. This here is a binding energy curve. And we can check our answer by analyzing this curve. We can see that our number of nucleons in our nucleus is 113. We're going to be somewhere in this region, roughly here. And our average binding energy per nucleon is shown here on the y-axis. If we follow up from x, we see that we're right about in this area, just between 8 and 9. And so that is what we found here for our binding energy per nucleon. So we see that our answer is within the range is what's given on the binding energy curve. And that's all. You can apply this same method for any for finding the binding energy for any atom or any um, amount of nucleons. You just want to keep in mind this equation here, Einstein's equation, your conversion factor, how to find the mass defect, and the binding energy equation itself. And the fact that if you want the binding energy per nucleon, you'll simply divide your total binding energy by the number of nucleons. And that's all. I hope I was able to help and have a great day.